WEAF New York. Eastern Daylight Saving Time begins at 2 a.m. tomorrow, so don't forget to turn your clocks ahead one hour. A pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with greetings from Red Foley, Jeanette, Bill Davis, and the Avalon Orchestra, and the only man in radio who has ears like steam shovels, they pick up all the dirt, Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Say, Dell, where do you get those corny introductions? <laughs> well, I don't know, Red. I guess it's the uh, farmer in the Dell. <laughs> <laughs> That's Del King, folks. He's a little tired. Last night, he put his mustache up in tin curlers and didn't sleep a wink. <laughs> Boy, what a mustache. Hey, Skelton. Yeah? Careful you don't get arrested wearing that suit. Uh, hi, you microphone. What do you mean? Do you think I'll get arrested wearing this suit? Well, yeah, you're dressed to kill. <laughs> <laughs> you like it, huh? Yeah, it fits your personality. You Plain don't? and simple. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, microphone. Say, have you been crying or did you wash your face? I... <laughs> I've been swimming. Boy, was that water cold. But it didn't bother me. I went right in. <laughs> I never did find out who pushed me. <laughs> but whoever it was, they did a good job. I did a swan dive that was so graceful that two seagulls asked me for my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed in the water for about 20 minutes. I'd have come out sooner, but there were some girls on the beach, and I had a run in my bathing suit stocking. <laughs> Not only that, I had big bags in the knees of my bathing suit. <laughs> I, stayed under, no kidding, I stayed under the water so long, I stayed under the water so long, that two fish swam by and offered me a worm. <laughs> But the water was so cold that I finally had to come out. When the folks saw my red hair, blue bathing suit, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wait, I lost that up, didn't I? Wait a minute, let's go. <laughs> I finally had to come out. They're all good, but if I can only find them. I was in the water so long, the two fish swam by it. Uh, I said that, didn't I? <laughs> That's why I heard it. <laughs> when I came out of the water and the folks saw my red hair, white bathing suit, and blue skin, they saluted me. <laughs> I think it'd been just as well out of went on. I don't know. <laughs> but I wasn't the only one in swimming. Edna Stilwell was there. She didn't exactly have on a bathing suit. She borrowed my handkerchief and said a prayer. <laughs> Del King went in swimming with that big mustache of his and got mating calls from a walrus. <laughs> Bill Davis. <laughs> Bill Davis. Oh, <laughs> You'll have to quit, lady. We got another program coming on right in back of us. <laughs> oh, but we appreciate those laughs. Phil Davis was in swimming, and he had on a leopard skin bathing suit. He looked like the Queen Mary in a sarong. <laughs> he did a high dive in the water and got a nasty letter from the flood control committee. <laughs> I love to lay around out on the beach and get that sunshine. In fact, I was so brown that three people came up and congratulated me on winning the Roper fight. <laughs> well, I think I've been out here splashing around long enough, so I'll wait out and let Red Foley dive in with We've come a long way together. <laughs> Go on in, fella. The water's fine. <laughs> Come a long way together since we met on the old village green. We've weathered all kinds of weather, and to me you are still sweet sixteen. I care if our hands 
turns to silver. We still have love to keep our hearts aglow. We've come a long way together, and we still have a long way to go. Gentlemen, if you saw a $5 bill lying in the street, you wouldn't just pass it up, would you? No, siree, you'd grab it up in a hurry. Well, friends, that's only a small part of the money you can save by switching to Avalon's, the quality cigarette that costs three to five cents less than other popular price brands. Yes, that consistent and repeated saving of three to five cents on every pack you smoke turns into many, many dollars in a surprisingly short time. And remember, it's money that you wouldn't otherwise have. Extra money to buy things you need and want. And now about the quality of Avalon cigarettes. We'll match them against any of the popular price brands on the market today because Avalons have an exclusive quality that can't be surpassed. They're 100% union-made from a mild, mellow blend of choice Turkish and domestic tobaccos. As fine a quality tobacco as ever went into a cigarette. That's why you'd never guess they cost you less. Never has a price so low bought more high quality in a cigarette. Give Avalon's a trial tonight. Bob Strong said he got a big kick out of making this arrangement, and now it's all yours from Stars in Your Eyes. I forgot to mention that Red Skelton is also the only man in radio who doubles as night watchman and janitor for a bank. As we look in at the Hope and Trust Company, we find our vice president in charge of mops, 
<laughs> busy with the banking business. Hello there, is that you, J.B.? This is Skelton with the Hope and Trust Company. Now, about that matter of foreign exchange, uh, <clears throat> make my order Danish pastry instead of French pastry, will you? Okay, now let's see, what was I doing here? Oh, yeah, I was going over these books with a dust rag. Uh-oh, somebody's at the door. Who's there? Who's there? You're gonna tell me who's there, or am I gonna have to run for my life? <laughs> oh, it's Miss Stillwell. <laughs> Well, it's about time you opened the door. Yeah, all ready for work? Come in, take off your thing. Look, I'm a secretary, not a fan dancer. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me take your coat and... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Somebody dropped a pot of geraniums on your head and it's stuck there. <laughs> That's my new hat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, we gotta get some work done here. You take the second floor, and I do mean with a scrub brush. <laughs> Scrubbing. This is swell. Secretary to a night watchman and janitor. There's only one job worse than mine. What's that? Yours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, my uncle started out as a night watchman 30 years ago, and he's been pretty lucky. Lucky? How? He's still got the job. <laughs> now, hurry and clean up. The president of the bank just called up and said he was going to come down here. He's going to run down here tonight to set that uh, lock on the vault. <clears throat> hey, I wonder who that is. Can't be the president. No president could run that fast, even for a third term. Well, who is that funny-looking goon? I don't know. It must be the president. Hiya, Prez. Huh? Stand where you are. But don't you move. Now, wait a minute, Prez. Now, put that gun away. We've never met before, but I'm your vice president in charge of liquid assets. I fill the... I fill the ink well. Oh, you're the vice president, huh? Yeah. I suppose the dame with the funny-looking hat is Francis Poikins. <laughs> it's Miss Stillwell. Meet the president of our bank. The bank? Oh, sure, sure, I'm the president of the bank. Well, he looks suspicious to me. How can you tell? He's wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose you want to fix the lock on the vault, eh, Prez? That's a lock? Yeah. What's wrong with it? Well, don't you remember? You just called up and said you forgot to set the time lock. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And I bring me tools along, too. <laughs> yeah. You see, here's me blowtorch, Jimmy, and drilling stuff. Okay, Fred. Now, if you need any help, let me know, will you? I sure will, chum. Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice fellow, that guy. They say he's terrific with figures. I'll bet the only figures he ever saw were at Minsky's. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first time I ever saw the president of a bank with a jimmy. Well, what's wrong with that? Even the president of the United States has a jimmy. <laughs> Wait, I'll answer that phone now. Hello. Listen, I want to come down and deposit my cow. Yeah. <laughs> you want to deposit a cow? Yeah, I want to get the milk certified. <laughs> Will you, will you do that for me, pal? Okay, fella. It's in the bag. Look, is that a policeman trying to get in here? I don't know. Hey, is that a policeman trying to get in? Well, it ain't Jesse James. <laughs> Hercules, a policeman. Come on in. Ah, little boy blue coat. Why are you out of breath, Herky? All those darn dead-end kids chased me five blocks. <laughs> what did you do to them, Herky? Nothing. They stole the pie, and I wanted my cut. <laughs> Not only that, those kids get my goat. They, oh, they get your goat? <laughs> Here it comes, folks. <laughs> they get your goat, eh? You mean they steal your billy? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to be pretty brave to be a policeman. Brave? Why, I captured five desperate killers with my policeman's club. Weren't you scared? Oh, goodness, no. There's 45 members in the club. <laughs> I'll bet you... <laughs> I'll bet you just go around looking for trouble, don't you? Archie? Oh, I'll say I do, Mr. Skelton. Why, a few minutes ago, a car passed me going 45 miles an hour, and I said, hey... Where do you think you're going? To a fire? And was I embarrassed? Why? 
why it was a fire truck. <laughs> well, I gotta go now and see if I can find out who shot that man they left hanging over the electric sign. You mean you're following a clue? No, I'm following Dick Tracy. <laughs> Ricky, you forgot your gun. Oh, get a load of this gun. <laughs> Say, I wonder how the press is making out with that time lock. <clears throat> hey, how you doing there, press? Okay, chum. <clears throat> I'd be hitting the jackpot soon. <laughs> well, look out for that bottle of soda pop I got in there. I'm keeping it cool on frozen asset. <laughs> well, put that gun down. You'll scare him to death. Okay, you having trouble, Press? Oh, I can't seem to get the door this board open. Well, I can open it. I wrote the combination down on a piece of paper. Say, chum, that swell. <laughs> Where is it? In your pocket? No, I was afraid I'd lose it, so I put it in the vault. Uh... <laughs> but don't worry, Press. I think I remember the combination. Let's see now. I was trying to think there for a minute. Oh, yeah. Right, 27. Right, 27. Left, 42. Left, 42. Right, 19. Right, 19. Left. Oh, I'd die if somebody gets bingo before me. <laughs> <laughs> what a dopey president that guy is. Mr. Skelton, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Phantom of Bank Night. <laughs> I always knew you belonged in a vault. Yes, yes. And this is your pretty little secretary. Yeah. My, but you look lovely. You have lips like petals. If you say bicycle petals, I'll clip you. <laughs> hey, what are you doing here anyway? Me? I'm president of this bank, J. Teppington Tinbox, the third. The third? Mm -hmm. You mean there's two other guys look like you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't the president of this bank. Oh, but I am. See the gray hairs in my toupee? Yeah. What's the idea of gray hairs in your toupee? So the board of directors will think I worry. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you're the president of the bank, who's that guy over there working on the time lock? Well, I could be Bulldog Drummond, but I'm Benny the Bum. <laughs> Benny the Bum? Remember me? Steve the Snicker. <laughs> Stevie! What are you doing here? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm president of this bank. Yeah? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm robbing the joint. Well, how interesting. As a matter of fact, I'm absconding with the fun. You wouldn't dare. Yes, I would. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm splitting with Benny the Bum. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Mr. Skelton, you can help yourself, too. It's just some old stuff we were going to send back to the mint. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Skelton, what? the best thing you can do is stop these guys. What's second best? I mean, uh, <clears throat> stick them up, you guys. And if either of you move, I'll die. <laughs> Look, here comes Herky. Officer Herky, go tell the policeman to call me a cop. Herky. Oh, here I come. Oh, goodness, a hold up. Here I go. Come in. <laughs> The handcuffs on him, Herky. Don't stand there shaking like me. Oh. There, there you are, you two rascals. Oh, Mr. Skelton, thank heaven that's over. Yeah. You know what you held them up with? Yeah. A water pistol. <laughs> I know it was a water gun. The reason I was so scared is because it wasn't loaded. <laughs> Jeanette says the path of true love never runs smooth. Here's what happens when the masquerade is over. Your eyes don't shine like they used to shine And the thrill is gone when your lips meet mine I'm afraid the masquerade is over and so is love, and so is love. Your words don't mean what they used to mean. They were once inspired, now they're just routine. 
I'm afraid the masquerade is over And so is love And so is love I guess I'll have to play Pagliacci And get myself a clown's disguise And learn to laugh like Pagliacci With tears in my eyes You look the same You're a lot the same But my heart, my heart says no, no You're not the same I'm afraid the masquerade is over And so is love And so is love Oh, that was Mom. Hello there, Skelton. Yeah, who are you? Oh, don't be silly. I'm Del King. I never heard of you. Listen here, don't give me that stuff. I'm Del King, and this is the spot where I tell about Avalons. Avalons? Avalons, Avalons, the quality cigarettes that cost three to five cents less than other popular price brands. I don't remember your name, but your phrase is familiar. <laughs> Listen, you must have a case of amnesia. You're nuts. I never touch the stuff. <laughs> You have amnesia, amnesia, the forgetting sickness. Yeah? Now, try and remember now. What? Here is where I say, friends, when you buy Avalon's, you get a cigarette, 100% union-made. Oh, yeah, yeah. Blended from the world's finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. Yeah. To give you an extra smooth, delightfully mild, thoroughly enjoyable smoke. Oh, sure. Now, do you remember? Remember what? <laughs> Avalon. They're three to five cents less than other popular price brands, but you'd never guess... They cost you less? <clears throat> I knew that would get you. That shows that you're recovering. From what? <laughs> your forgetting sickness, your amnesia. Who's got magnesia? <laughs> amnesia. Oh, I can't be bothered. Now, remember, friends, the next time, ask for Avalon cigarettes. And don't forget your chain. Okay, what'd I buy? Oh, wait a minute, my money. Somebody's taking my dough. Where's my money? Come back here. What am I... Where am I at? Oh, oh, hiya, Dell. Let's make a commercial. Oh, some other time. Hey, Dell, come on back here. Mr. Avalon, he's only kidding. He... Hey, Dell, Mr. Avalon wants you. Come no, here. I'm not interested. Hey, you, you better come... Somebody stop him there. Come on, Dell. You gotta make an announcement about Avalon cigarettes. <laughs> Dell, I got an option coming up. <laughs> me back to my booth and saddle let me see that general store let me ride that range once more give me my boots and saddle let me ramble along the prairie mm -hmm. open stairs on old barrette with my buddy Slim and Tess Give me my boots and saddle Got a hankering to be with a banjo on my knee Strumming a pretty western tune There's a gal in Cherokee and she's waiting there for me Waiting beneath the Texas moon So take me back To my boots and saddle Let me 
they greet his slaves and more on the ranch where I was born. Give me my boots and saddle. Foley and the Avalon Chorus with their stirring interpretation of Boots and Saddle. Uh, say, Skelton, um, have you uh, got a saga for this week? Yes, sir, boy, we got a pip. Napoleon Bonaparte, Skelton. Oh, swell. What's it all about? Well, the time's April the 18th, 1815, and the place is Waterloo. Now, Napoleon Skelton is lying on the battlefield, and he's very sick. You know, he's just lost a big battle. And Lady Lou, better known as the Countess of Waleska, is standing right beside Napoleon. And the Lady Lou says... Do you want anything, Napoleon? And Napoleon says, yes. Waterloo. <laughs> Bad, huh? Oh, uh, let's save it for next week. Yeah, what do we do this week? Well, that's where I come in. I've written a little sketch. Yeah, a sketch? <laughs> yes, it's a cross between a skit and a sketch. So I call it a sketch. Oh, for a minute, I thought there was something wrong with your English. <laughs> Uh, you'll like my sketch. Now, the scheme takes place... The scheme? <laughs> yes, the scheme takes place in the Ozarks. You know, in a sketch, you have schemes. Now, the scheme is in the Ozarks Mountains. Mountains. I like mountains better than mountains, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure, 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 yeah. Mountains make a much better scheme for a sketch. <laughs> don't you think so, Del? Oh, slow, I blink so. <laughs> You can't do a play that hasn't been rehearsed. <laughs> well, the listeners have never heard a play that hasn't been rehearsed, so we'll let them know how they sound before they are rehearsed. Okay. So here's your part. Okay, uh, you set the scene, will you, Del? All right, Red. Now, uh, what are we going to use for music? I'll fix it. Okay, Phil, play some mountain music and an octave faster than that la last number you played. This ain't going to help my Crosley any. <laughs> The time, the hottest day in August. The, the place, Warm Mattress, Arkansas. That's just above Hot Spring. Yeah. Oh, uh, now, wait a minute. Is opens... this in the south or the Corn Belt? Where are we at? Where As the scene opens, we find Ida May talking to Cicero, her boyfriend, who's been married before and is considered the laziest man in the mountain. Ain't love a wonderful thing? Yeah. When you got married the first time, did you feel something cold running up and down your back? Nope. Her pappy held a gun pretty steady. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't do things like that on the radio. What are you talking about? Well, did you love her? Yes, I loved the ground she stood on till I found out there was a mortgage on the place. <laughs> Man, it sure is warm, isn't it? <clears throat> Would you mind taking that there handkerchief of yours and wipe the perspiration from my brow? <laughs> You're the laziest man I ever saw. I ain't lazy. I'm just curbing my energy. <laughs> well, you better. Why, you're so skinny, if you had a little fuzz on you, they could use you for a stovepipe cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Show is hot standing here in the sun, ain't it? Say, Ida May, you see that nice shady spot over there under that tree? Uh-huh. I'd give anything in the world if I was sitting there. <laughs> well, it's getting late, ain't it? Yep. Ain't you getting hungry? Yep. Well, ain't you gonna go home? Nope. Why? I'm standing in a bear trap. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Get me out of here, will you, friends? Well, friends, remember the next time when you ask for Avalon cigarettes... Don't forget your change. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's show and we cordially invite you to be with us next Saturday evening when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. 
If your community does not observe daylight saving time, please tune in one hour earlier and listen to Red Skelton Tuesday night at 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time when he appears as guest on the Doghouse program, a new program that we think you'll like. Del King speaking. Good night, everybody. Avalon Time originated in the studios of the nation's station and reached you through the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York, 9 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Boulevard Watch Time.